Hey NorCal Carters, Jason here. So this is a quick video on the basically the apparatus or anatomy on the outside of the Walbro W-A-L-B-R-O Walbro W-B-3-A carburetor. So this carburetor is commonly used on the HPV, KPV, um, KT-100s and many other engine applications. So it's a pumper style carburetor so the, basically how it works is it takes positive negative pressure from the crankcase through a tube that hooks up to this pulse line here and uh, that positive negative pressure goes through the carburetor and um, to simplify it basically pushes and pulls on a diaphragm gasket which creates the suction and the fuel pump is built in to this carburetor again diaphragm setup or also known as a pumper so again, Walbro, WB3A, this is the pulse line. So when you hook this up to your engine, you want to use a flexible but firm line, uh, either cloth braided fuel line, uh, Sweet Textel is a really nice one. Uh, there's also, um, you want to use, if you're using like a fuel line like this, um, you want to make sure that it's not going to crack, it has a proper fitting on the barbs and it's also not going to compress. Some fuel lines are real soft and uh, if this starts to compress it could affect your fuel supply. So again this is the pulse line. The line runs from, through a hose to your case. This is your fuel inlet. So on this carburetor this is going to be the fuel line in from your gas tank. Now some people will say never run a fuel filter some people will say always run a fuel filter. I'm, I'm on the fence about it. Um, I have seen issues where air gets in the fuel filter and these carburetors are very sensitive to air bubbles and um, it can cut out, it'll hesitate and uh, again that hesitation can cause you tense on the track. So if you decide to use a fuel filter make sure you purge it of all air keep it below what the um, the fuel level would be in the gas tank. Again, purge it from air. Also make sure it's a good flowing filter. And built into the carburetor as well, there is a little screen. Um, so you need to check that on a regular basis if you're not running a fuel filter because most of our fuels are pretty dirty. So, pulse line fitting. Fuel line inlet. Now, one of a very, very common question is the needles. Which one's which? So you have your low speed and your high speed. And most of your time, your low speed needle or circuit is going to be the closest needle to the engine. And on many carburetors, the high speed is going to be the furthest away from the engine or basically on the inlet side of the carburetor. So again, you have your low speed and your high speed. And on this particular carburetor, uh, again, this is the Walbro WB3A. I like to tune with the low speed first because I feel that covers a broader range through the throttle position. So tune with the low speed first. I'm not going to give you settings in this video because I don't know what your application is. And then you fine tune with the high speed. And the high speed circuit on this carburetor is going to kick in from about 5 eighths to full throttle. So again, low speed, zero to three quarter if not more um, on the throttle position. It's all about throttle position and the high speed from 5 eighths to full throttle. And they do cross over, so it's just not, it's not like you get to 5 eighths and then all of a sudden the low speed stops and the high speed works. It all crosses over, but I'm generalizing here. So, low speed, and it's even marked. L, low speed. H, high speed. And on this carburetor, many times, the low speed is the only one with the flex T needle. So, that's your needles. Now you have your throttle shaft. So you have the throttle shaft. Now this is a very simplistic design. You have the throttle shaft and then this axe is your stop. So when it's wide open throttle, this tab is going to meet up with the carburetor body. Now you got to be careful. If you don't properly adjust your pedals on your cart and it's piano wire tight, what will happen is when you're hitting bumps or curbs or going over the berm and your foot bounces off that pedal, 
the carburetor, it's going to go like this. Now, if this is sitting there, and all of a sudden you have your throttle cable, again, this is the throttle arm, so the throttle cable goes into here. If that's bottomed out, you hit a big curb and your foot bounces off the throttle pedal, pretty sure most of you, your foot is stronger than that little piece of metal. So if your pedal stops are not set properly on the chassis, then what will happen is over time, this stop will start bending away. And on this carburetor, I already set it, so it's already wide open and touching. But what you'll see is on one of these tabs that's bent away, the carburetor will actually over rotate. And this butterfly will start going down, which is then going to start cutting off your throttle. So keep that in mind as well. So you always use your throttle stops on your chassis. If you're not comfortable doing it, ask a local uh, track pro to help you out um, to do it properly. But I've seen many times where guys don't adjust their pedals properly. This bottoms out, someone hits a curb or just smashes on the gas pedal and it starts bending that tab. And then the carburetor starts rotating beyond full throttle, which starts to close. And since we're talking about throttle, so this is going to be your shutter valve or butterfly valve. And uh, this brass bar here, this is part of, part of the throttle shaft that goes through the carb. This one's held on by a circlip. Some of them are held on by screws, but this particular Walbro is using a circlip to hold the throttle shaft in place. Then you have your butterfly screw. Depending on your rules or application, sometimes that has to be stock unmodified and some applications don't really care how you secure the butterfly. So as you can tell, this one's a very low profile uh, set screw. So to remove the throttle shaft, remove the set screw, open up, you'll see two little tabs on the butterfly valve. See those two little tabs? That helps you act as a stop for the butterfly as you're sliding it in and out of the throttle shaft. So remove set screw, open, and then gently pull the butterfly out. Then remove clip, gently pull throttle shaft out. So these are high wear items, so it's, it's a very common thing to replace. And then we also have your idle adjust screw. So right now, I don't know if you can really see it in the video. I just quickly adjusted it just so the butterfly valve was not shutting against the carburetor body. So this one has a little bit of idle adjust into it. Until it goes on a cart, I won't know if this has idle or not. But again, I use that as a stop so the butterfly doesn't just slam against the carburetor body because over time that'll wear the body out. Then you need a new carb. So throttle shaft, idle screw, and then stop. I guess we can call it uh, throttle stop to adjust your full throttle low speed, high speed, pulse, this is your pulse line, and this is your fuel inlet. So again, this is just a very quick video on the anatomy of the Walbro WB3A carburetor. And later I will post a video of the internals. Um, I'm actually working on a few carburetors right now. So I'll have a rebuild video and then the internals. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. If you appreciate this contact, uh, content, consider a donation to NorCal Carters. I'll post a link below on our PayPal link. Um, and then share our channel with your friends. So hope this is helpful. Have a great day.